of the evening. So I will be honoring the age-old tradition that the best man speech should not last longer than the groom on his first night with his wife. So, <laughs> this is going to go really quick. It's that he likes to take his time. <laughs> Eleven years to lock down, twelve, twelve years to lock down this town for a human. Wow, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> we have now entered our second recession in the United States. <laughs> Three presidents. Joe Biden was a young man. So, do you have any Game of Thrones fans in there? Yeah. Right. You guys see where I'm going with this, right? The whole show, beginning to end. Chuck, kingdoms have risen and fallen. Come on. The man likes to take his time. I mean, let's be real. At like year eight, Melissa has some choices to make. We're glad you're here today, Melissa. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so for the record, I ran all of these jokes by Seth, who's Chuck's younger brother. Seth, can you stand up, please? <laughs>
Yeah, so I learned a lot from Chuck. You know, many parts of my belief system have either been challenged or strengthened by the conversations that I have with Chuck. And I like to think that many of us in this room probably share a very similar experience. I actually have this very vivid memory of showing Chuck a new Speed Con song. It's like 2011. And he's like, it's my turn. Give me the ox. And it's an ox. That's weird because everyone uses blue teeth now. Um, and he put on his favorite piece by Pablo de Sarasanto. It's his favorite violinist. Right? That's, I've always known. I've always known since the early days that I've had a lot to learn from Charles. You know, there's countless nights in that kitchen, and I really did learn that this was one of the most compassionate, cultured, and authentic humans I ever met. I learned while baking bad with Chuck that this was a man who cared deeply about things that other people often overlooked. Even the smallest details in that kitchen, the quality of what we produced, it was never just a cake pop to Chuck. It was something much bigger, an extension of his name. And he really took every opportunity to master his craft. Everything had to be perfect. He was really an artist in that kitchen. You guys should have seen him. A lot of late nights. <laughs> so I learned about Chuck through that process that he would rather do something the right way, no matter how long it took, than to rush something and half-ass it. And that is really quite similar to the love story of Charles and Melissa. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you guys know, I mean, he did mention it in his vows, ironically, of uh, the first time that he met Melissa, his soon-to-be wife. The second he laid eyes on her, he knew. I believe the actual words were, I saw her there, short shorts, tan, hot, beer blasting a friend. And I said, wow, that's going to be my wife. <laughs> Amazing. The very first question I had, there were many. The very first question I had is, what the hell is beer blasting? And where do I get one of those? You know, but Chuck went on from there to do what he does best. He took the time to do this the right way, true to his values and belief system, rather than rushing into something and half-assing it. So I know I owe you guys one funny story before I leave. It wouldn't be a very good best man in speech without it. So a few years ago, Chuck flew out here to Denver with his eyes set on climbing this really heavy mountain. I also recognize that I'm one sentence into this, and everyone's like, that sounds like Chuck. His mom is literally cracking up right now. I said, hey bud, listen, you know you need to acclimate. You're at two miles, a mile and a half above sea level. Maybe wait a few days before you try and summit this mountain. You risk dehydration, nausea, lightheadedness, you know, it could be dangerous. Chuck laughed, and he, he decided to disregard my caution. So like any good friend would do, I said, all right, cool, well, here's the keys to my car. <laughs> and uh, I believe I said the West is the fastest way. <laughs> so he set out to summit this mountain. I think he had like two snacks in his backpack. Or something. Just total Florida thing to do in the mountains. Um, and for those of you, um, you know, if you don't know, here in the Rocky Mountains, like even right now in the winter or the summer, there is snow on the mountains, right? So at the peak, whoever went on that hike on Saturday, you guys saw there's still some snow there, right? All year round. So has anyone in here ever had sunburn before? Pretty terrible? Yeah. Turns out if you don't have sunglasses on and you're staring at the direct reflection of the sun against the white snow, like for example on a hike, uh, you will burn the surface of your eyeballs and naturally lose your vision. 
which ironically is exactly what happened to Chuck. <laughs> And I want to be very clear about something that I've never said out loud before. We are very lucky to have you here today. <laughs> and the funny part is I recognize that most of us in here probably share a near-death experience like this time as well. It's so hilarious. So Lesser Man would probably have not made it back, truthfully. Uh, not only did he have to make it down the mountain with limited eyesight, he had to drive my car back to bed. So I literally spent that entire night nursing this blind man on my car. <laughs> He's all like, I can't see. I'm like, you're fine, dude. It's probably, it's probably just allergies. <laughs> Do you need me to run to the store and get you some medical? It was so bad, he said yes. <laughs> so there we were, both pretending that Benadryl was going to fix anything. Oh, man. And, you know, the worst part of all of this is every time Chuck comes back to Denver, I have to hear his new plan for summoning this mountain. <laughs> Terrible. So, I share this story specifically because before us sits a man with unrelentless commitment. A man who will do anything he sets his eyes to. A man who's willing to learn and challenge himself. A dangerous man, even. <laughs> Skilled in the art of jiu-jitsu, who can almost certainly beat all of us up in here. <laughs> and most of the time chooses not to. <laughs> Sorry, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Stephen T. Just <laughs> a man who, yes, will take his time, but lives so thoughtfully and with so much intention that if he were to bring half of what I've witnessed in that kitchen and on that mountain to this marriage, Melissa, you will be wildly happy until the very last day of your life. Perry's, Jules, thank you very much for hosting this wonderful wedding. And everyone, please raise your glasses. In honor of Chuck and Melissa and Jewel, let's go! Let's hear it for the best man!